Hi. Um, so today I finished my uh, fertility appointments at um, Guy's Hospital in London. Uh, I just thought I'd do a video, um, a brief one, kind of uh, outlining exactly what the process is. Because obviously, because I've got an aggressive form of lymphoma, um, and now I've only been given a week basically to get my life in order before I have the treatment. Um, and uh, sperm um banking and uh sort of uh, saving your sperm isn't really something that i thought about uh so basically when i was in my diagnosis consultation the nurse and the the uh consultant um basically said to me you know uh i don't know if you thought about it and my answer is no um but basically uh they'd already pre-booked um, me to have appointments in a uh, guy's hospital. They they took it upon themselves to do that because obviously the short the time span was uh, not there. Um, it's quite short, um, which I was happy about because you know what? Like even though it's not something I've thought about much and it's not something that I've considered, especially not right now. Um, I think it would be quite a big thing not to have that you know opportunity or at least the choice to to have sperm. Um, to be able to have uh, you know utilize that in the future. Um. So yeah, um, yeah, that that's something that they set up for me, and then all I needed to do was confirm. But basically, the process uh, needs to happen because when you have cancer, um, you need to have chemotherapy normally, uh, and certain types of chemotherapy the chemotherapy deplete your uh, sperm count significantly. Uh, my one ABVD um, basically is a cocktail of four chemicals, um, and they. Because this one is a is a sophisticated uh, cocktail that they've used for years and years, and they've managed to hone it down into like the best form that it can be at this point. Um, uh, I've been informed that actually the 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 risk is minimal for this one, um, and that it will only get rid of your sperm for around a year, whereas a lot of other ones uh, can sometimes last five years after your initial treatment. Uh, uh, sorry, after your treatment ends. Um, so yeah, I've got to go in and I have to go in and freeze my sperm. Um, it's a very strange concept. Uh, came out of the blue. Had to say yes to it. Um, glad I did. Glad they put me forward for it. But basically, the um process was as follows. Uh, I had a phone call literally five minutes after my uh, appointment um, trying to book me in. Uh, I was having a blood test at the time, so I had to say no. But then they've called me at uh, dead on four o'clock, which is what I asked them to do. Um, and booked me in for uh so the the appointment my consultation was on the Thursday my diagnosis was on Thursday, uh my uh first appointment for um the fertility clinic was on Monday and then um, my last one was today which is Wednesday so it's hot, happened really quickly, um you get you have to take your passport you're allowed to take your own material if you want um they say that they provide material for you which I don't know how how I feel about considering of COVID and actually even before COVID I wouldn't want to be touching magazines um that other people have been touching whilst you're masturbating in a room uh I don't know how anyone else feels about that um but uh yeah so um that wasn't there because of COVID thankfully um but basically you go in uh it's by London Bridge Station so it's literally one stop from where we are um you speak to the lovely receptionists uh they sign you up you have to you're given loads of forms because obviously there's a lot of legal stuff when it comes to freezing sperm um and yeah uh it's on the 11th floor it's a lovely kind of part of the hospital um you know there's three waiting rooms uh for different things because obviously you've got couples that are there in the hospital having ivf uh you've got um women by themselves men by themselves all doing different things to do with their like um pregnancy issues or fertility issues that they need solving um and so i was there by myself um i had to fill forms in consenting to uh, the freeze, um, the fact that they will be frozen for five years uh, and um, basically if I want them frozen for longer than five years, if my sperm hasn't come back after my um, ABVD chemotherapy, um, then uh, you've got to pay £350 a year. Um, but because of my type of ABVD, hope, uh, because of my type of chemotherapy, hopefully um, mine will be back within a year anyway. Uh, but it's there's sort of security and a sort of... Uh, insurance policy really that you know in case I ever wanted to pop a few out in the future um any um sort of uh potential surrogates you know bears in mind you never know uh actually will really doesn't want kids but you know 
who knows? Um, but yeah, so you uh, you go there, you fill out all of this information, you give consent, you have to uh, talk about um, the research policies. I mean, I'm all for it. I said, you know, let's do research. Uh, if 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 this my sperm isn't needed um, by me, uh, then they, I've given my consent for them to do whatever they want with it. Because um, you know, who wouldn't want to know about my sperm uh, and learn from it in the future? <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, you sit there, you fill out the forms, then you're greeted by a, a lovely doctor. Um, he spoke to me about it. He was very, um, you know, understanding about my uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. He said that it's very treatable again, reassured me about the cancer that I've got, um, and basically asked me if I needed any emotional support. I think a lot of people are quite, like, are taken aback by the way that I'm dealing with it. Um, but like, as I said, I've had a, quite a while to to get to terms with it before the diagnosis because I knew that something wasn't right. And so I'm dealing with it in a positive way. I feel really like good about that. Today's an even better day in terms of positivity, actually. Um, but yeah, you do all of the legal stuff uh, and then you get taken for a blood test. Um, they take two bloods from you um, and then sort of two vials of blood and then they uh, take that. And then the next thing you do is you go into the room uh, with uh, a very strange uh, looking grey pot that is designed to be able to go through an air chute. Um, you fill out a form uh, with the date of the sperm sample, the um, whether or not uh, there was any spillage uh, whilst you were making the uh, sample, um, whether or not uh, you've abstained for the appropriate amount of time um, which uh, was five to seven days, which I had. Uh, and then obviously then you are left to your own devices in the happy room, as I learned today that it's called, um, uh, which is literally just like a lounge um, that you lock and there's a light on it. Um, there's a sink and a, uh, a couple of sofas and a chair and a table and stuff. Um, and then you, you do your business. Um, you're advised to take as long as you like uh, so that there's no pressure. And yeah, the you the sample size uh, is is quite a an interesting size. Like not getting into the nitty gritty too much, but you know to try and aim it into the right place is uh, an interesting experience. Depending on how you uh, you know your your body's designed and um you know what you're used to, um, but the uh, overall experience was was very easy. Once it, uh, once it once that had been done, um, you then fold up the piece of paper that your, all your information is in. You put the test tube into a plastic bag. You then put those all of those things into that special like container, um, and then uh, te theoretically, what you're meant to do is you're then meant to pop it into the chute, and then that shoots up into the lab. Um, but and then you leave basically. Um, but on the first time that I went, uh, it, that shoot wasn't working. And so there was this like the weird alter, alt, alt sort of, um, moment where I had to hand my sperm over to the receptionist. And she was like, oh, yeah, yeah, this doesn't normally happen. Um, but yeah, so uh, that was that. Um, no spillage either time, thankfully. And then um, no sticky fingers. Sorry. And uh, yeah, um, so that was that. And then I went again today then and uh, literally took 20 minutes today. Um uh, in and out, uh, and it was um, really easy. Um, one thing I was really impressed with um, is the ease of the language used, and like for a lot of guys, particularly, I think you know, um, giving a sperm sample or you know, it can be quite a daunting thing, an awkward thing, a bar embarrassing. You're tempted to laugh a lot, um, but really, there needs to be more awareness and more and, and normalize it. And what they've done is really normalize the situation. There were so many people there. There were so many couples, so many single men, so many single women, just trying, you know, to do what they need to do to have their families. Um, and whilst my situation was different because I've got cancer, um, I really did appreciate the environment that it was. Um, the staff were amazing. They spoke about you about it candidly. Um, there was no awkwardness. Uh, the rooms had been named particularly well um, to like get rid of the like the the, the coldness of it all, um, and everything was in place to make it as easy as possible. So yeah, well done, guys. Hospital. Um, yeah, that's all it is really. Now the process now is I'm gonna have my chemo. Uh, I, I have to go back uh, in a year's time. 
uh, and uh, I need to uh, basically test my, my sperm again. And then from that point onwards, um, if, if my sperm is back, um, then yeah, I can choose to keep my sperm there for the five years. Uh, and if I don't need to, then I don't need to. Uh, simple as that. So yeah, uh, within literally like six days, all of this has been done um, really speedy. And um, I couldn't have asked for anything, any a, a better experience. So yeah, sperm talk out of the way, sperm bank done. Um, yeah. Next thing now is uh, COVID vaccination on Friday. Wish me luck.